Welcome to a full throttle shindig in Dixie. Featuring tube frame high horsepower rocket sleds and their steel nerve pilots looking for a good time. This is not just any old get together. This is a party fueled by cold alcohol and laughing gas. The 2022 MRA season continues at DT's Dirt Drags in Gore Springs, Mississippi tonight under the lights. It's the Rail Elite, the Modified Paddle Class, and the Open Cuts. Of course, the story in the Open Cuts class has to be the up and down season of the current points leader and the local hero Kevin Harrison in the Eric Bidlack built Never Enough. The uh, back and forth battle has been a three-way one with Joel Coolidge in Nightmare 6 and last year's champion Billy Fling in Reality Check, though. A contender from north of the border, Steve Renaud snuck in in his Racing in the Dirt Built 481X powered Frantic to take some pride from the Hemi fraternity, though travel difficulties did put an end to his championship chase uh, for the Canadian and drop the battle back on the table for that trifecta of power I talked about of Harrison, Coolidge, and Billy Fling. Of course, this is a multi-class championship fight. We're going to kick it off with the Modifieds, and it has been a runaway so far in this nitrous-injected class. The Racing in the Dirt father and son team out of Cleveland, Wisconsin, with their deranged rear engine rail, have been not only consistent but present in a season of low car counts, and that has really helped to keep them unfettered in this championship chase. And there you see, I mentioned the runaway, sitting just above, by the way, a major underdog who's also been consistent this year, Jesse Brown, who is leading our pro stock division. We will see him again later in the weekend. Right now, though, the car counts are going up, and here is one of the killers who has showed up to spoil the party, Jason Massey out of Frazier's Bottom West, by God, Virginia. The Massey Mud Racing entry, and uh, you talk about a guy who is nobody to be messed around with. He is a record holder in the class, and that means he has not only won, but he won convincingly. He goes side by side with this Gary Baker built Power Pro chassis, the Mud Pony. That's Jeff Smith out of Austin, Arkansas. 772 cubic inch big block Ford Hemi built by Snake Power Engines out of Prescott, Arkansas. We'll see what he has for Jason Massey, who has that 878 cubic inch aluminum block Chevrolet in the back of his machine. They are in pre-stage right now. Once one side is lit, you have seven seconds to get to the line before a red light. A lot of material coming out of the pipes on Smith's car. He will break the beam and set a time. A 2-3-4 with a 5 for Massey, so a good run to start off the class, but it looks like some dollar damage done to the Mud Pony right there. He is uh, leaving some oil in the dirt out there. They're going to clean that up when we take a look at the replay. But you see Jeff Smith come off the line. Keep your eye on the header pipes. See a pop of flames and a bunch of material coming out of there. They're going to have to get in there and pull spark plugs and a myriad of other things. Hopefully they did not actually pop that motor, but he did zing it when he came off the line. So something going wrong with that machine here in Gore Springs. We'll see if they can get it back in action. Probably not tonight, but they will put on the cut tires and run again tomorrow. I have a feeling we will see the Smith family back out here then. But in the meantime, they tow him off and we bring a pair of giants in the sport to the line. The legend, Keith Mitchell, the Keystone Killer out of Fredonia, Pennsylvania in the Magician. 960 cubic inch Sonny's power plant. Sonny Leonard, uh, definitely a name that was uh, very familiar to the sport of mud racing. Now dirt drags over the years going side by side with uh, this family of horsepower, the old Rogies. There you see Scott getting Shane lined up. As I said, this is a father and son team. They have their hands on a lot of equipment, not only in this class, 
but in every class in the sport, they cut tires, they build chassis, they make accessories, they even build rear ends. So even if they're not in the points, it's to their advantage to show up and run because they can build a customer base that way. But they picked on a bad boy in the sport in Keith Mitchell with uh, that machine out of the Keystone State. It's going to be the magician Mitchell versus Orogi in Deranged. Little purge of the nitrous, they will light the tree and we will go green. Blistering the track is Old Rogi. A 2 3 2 with a 6. And Mitchell was shimmying around in that lane. He's going to want that run back. I can guarantee you that. We know there's a lot more that that machine has in it, but look at old Rogi lay it down here. Lights the candles, digs in, goes nice and straight. He was quick and he was fast. Were you bothered by any of the ruts on the starting line or were they gone by the time you got up there? We had a fresh spot. Uh, it's gonna come down to who can read it and who can work with the track right now. How's the car running overall? It's getting late in the year. It's getting a little hurt, but uh, we're still running hard. You don't seem like you have some of those bugs you had early in the year, though. No, I think we got them figured out right now. All right, good luck in the second session. Thank you. There you see Scott O'Rogi still hanging around the starting line as he lines up a machine that came out of their shop. This is Daniel Carrier out of Spalding, Nebraska. Made his first competition pass in the modified class out in Burwell, Nebraska on the MRA Championship earlier this year another father and son team they also have a pickup truck called the troublemaker a ford pickup in the super stock class we'll be seeing later on this weekend so contenders in two classes here we go with the mod good run early in his career he's definitely going to be in the conversation a 263 so he will better keith mitchell puts himself above one of the legends in the sport that's not a bad place to be this early in your modified class career. He's been a contender in super stocks. We'll see what he can do here in looking for trouble again out of the racing and the dirt shop. We'll uh, keep an eye on this guy for the rest of the year as he dug into this Mississippi clay. Right now though, I'm gonna make my way over to the magician pit area and talk to Keith Mitchell about uh, what he thought of his run. Keith, session one, how did it feel? It didn't look like a run you might be happy with right now. Nah, no, it wasn't. Uh, we didn't get enough weight on the clutch, so we're going to put some more weight on it. Wasn't going to log up. We feel that we, the wheelie bar may have caught a rut because the car sashayed. I had to backpedal, so every time you backpedal, timing's not good. So it wasn't a good pass to get a lot of good readings. and We'll hope the left lane's a better lane and uh, see what we can do with it. Look like the starting line's chewing up quicker this time around than it did when the last time you were here. Yeah, no, I think the track's heavier and it seems to have some pretty good hook. Yeah, and absolutely. I think that's some of the problem was with the, with the clutch setup. So it's heavier and I think you, we showed it in the clutch. So. All right, well, we'll let you get back to work. Thanks, Keith. Thanks, sir. Well, as they get back to work to get ready for session two, here is a look at the uh, results after session one. You see Rogi on top of Massey. That's going to be the battle in this class tonight, I have a feeling. But Daniel Carrier not looking too bad, but with Keith Mitchell gets his problems worked out, look out on the other end. Stay with us. We'll be back. The open class, the blower cars coming to the line next. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Monsters Monthly. For up-to-date info, media, and all your other monster truck needs, visit MonstersMonthly.com. And by RPM Army. For a wide array of content from across the motorsports world, visit rpmarmy.com, your high-performance fix on the go.
This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Crush This. For a look inside the world of monster trucks, check out Crush This, a monster truck podcast. Back at DT's Dirt Drags in Gore Springs, Mississippi, under the lights with the open glass now as they come to the line. These are the blower cars, the forced induction machines, the kings of the sport. David Hahn out of Iwa Beach, Hawaii, makes his way to the line by way of the state of Minnesota. He is going to go side by side with his own brother, Lou, in a wild card out of Black Duck, Minnesota, who's already trying to get that thing woed as he jolts back up the starting line there. I'm not sure if he's going to realign that or not because he just dug four big holes in that staging area, but uh, he'll come up anyway. It's all in the family here in this first pairing in the open class. A lot of smoke, though, I'm noticing out of the vehicle in the uh, right lane, so we'll see if that bothers David Hahn at all. Nice straight run for Lou. David Hahn with problems evidently in that right-hand lane. It looks like he may have actually uh, tapped the guardrail there, but uh, the car goes quiet. So apparently multiple problems for the born free red, white, and blue clad rear engine rail out of Iwa Beach, Hawaii. You can see Lou Hahn with a fairly good run right there. May want a little more uh, speed in the next session a little quicker to the clock, but uh, otherwise you should be happy with it. Keep your eye on David Hahn right here as he moves off to the right-hand side and uh, does indeed bang the rail as he exits the lane. Well, it was all in the family in that first session. You keep getting to run each other here. Uh, how'd the car feel in that pass? It was awesome. Yeah, it hooked that time and just took off like a rocket. I noticed you guys were back here checking out both cars. He had a tremendous amount of smoke, it looked like. Was there yeah. any problem there, or is it just run like that? Well, we got a new uh, setup here that we're trying to tune and dial in right now. So once we get that tiled in, we'll get that fuel consumption down a little bit. So right now she's drinking it. Seemed like it gave him a big puff at about half, maybe three quarters track. It just... Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, it's drinking the fuel. He probably ran out. That's why it went pop. Yeah. Well, good luck to both of you guys in the next session. I'll let you get back to work. We're going to head back down to the starting line now. Here's another Minnesota machine. This is Joel Coolidge out of Two Harbors, Minnesota in Nightmare 6. Another racing in the dirt belt machine. I said those guys had their hands on a lot of equipment across many classes. Well, this is one of them. You see his son Tyler getting him staged up there, going up against last year's cut and paddle tire champion in the open class. That's Billy Fling out of Sunbury, Ohio in reality check. The Brasket race cars built chassis with a 581 cubic inch Hemi. One up against the 500 cubic inch Allen Johnson performance engine of Joel Coolidge. They come into stage and wait on the green light. Coolidge coming to the middle a little bit. He got in some trouble in that run. He had to pedal it throughout. But uh, Billy Fling looking good to take the number one spot right now. A 2-3-1 with a 7 for Billy Fling. So we watch it again, and you can see Coolidge pedaling the car all the way down as you see the uh, puff out of the header is coming and going. That is an indication that he is on and off the throttle. Watch it again. Definitely drifting over to the right-hand side of the track, trying to keep that car under control. Heads up driving, though. He did not end up making contact with Billy, as I know Fling does not want that to happen again. Here comes your points leader now, Kevin Harrison, from down the road in Grenada, Mississippi. And the guy following him in is a guy we're all very glad to see back in action. He's been battling parts shortages throughout the year. A record holder down in Sanford, North Carolina, Daryl Jones's track. and. Uh, it's a record I know he's very proud of in the cut tire class. That is Greg Monsmith. Lesson learned out of Warsaw, Indiana. There you see Kevin Harrison and Never Enough from right down the road in Grenada. See Eric Bidlack on the line right there getting him lined up. They've had their problems this year as he goes side by side with Monsmith. Monsmith though looking to play spoiler here in session one to the points leader.
problems evidently from Monsmith, and they do appear to be rather serious as uh, he did get off the line. A 2-3-3 three, three with an 8 for Kevin Harrison. We'll put him in the number 2 spot, but you can see the body language on Greg there. He is not a happy camper right now, and that machine is, uh, he definitely did some damage. Looks like maybe drivetrain damage. Keep your eye on the car nearest the camera. You can see some sparks come out back there. Kevin Harrison, though, nice and quick. That's a good run to set the pace for him in this uh, session number one here. I know he has plans to go faster in session two to try to keep up that points lead as he has uh, Billy Fling and Joel Coolidge closing in on him right now as uh, the uh, Monsmith family checks on that machine. There you see Gage getting ready to climb in to take that off the track. And you can see they are looking around, not at the engine. They're actually looking down where the transfer case and transmission, the chain drive and everything are. I have a feeling they may have spun the entire drivetrain inside of the frame rails. And if they did that, they're going to be out for the evening. Billy Fling on top of the class right now at a 2-3-1 with a 7. Then a 2-3-3 with an 8 for Kevin Harrison. He's well capable of jumping back up there. But Joel Coolidge, if he can straighten that car out, he's right on their heels. Lou Hahn and David Hahn rounding out our five-car field here in Gore Springs, Mississippi. We're going to put a quick groom on the clay here in Gore Springs at DT's Dirt Drags and be back with the Modifieds. More nitrous-powered action is next. Hey, welcome to Wild Man Adventures. We're at the Silver Lake Sand Dragway. There really wasn't any off-roading back then. It was all off-road. We're on our way to Lima, Ohio. That wooden wheel. My slippery is all get out of Hey, we're here with Rich Cummins. Hey, we're here with Mike Potter. Hey, we're here with Alan Pizzo. Gotta check it out. This week, we're gonna go down memory lane. Under the lights in Gore Springs, Mississippi at DT's Dirt Drags as we wrap up grooming. We're going to get ready to bring the modified paddle class back to the line. Shane O'Rogie leading the charge at a 2-3-2-6. But Jason Massey right on his heels. A guy who doesn't normally run this tour with a 2-3-4 out of session number one. And then the surprise of the class, Daniel Carrere at a 2 6 Three, four. Keith Mitchell looking for a little more speed now in this session at a 267 and Jeff Smith out of the competition tonight with engine damage. We'll see if he can get things back on track for tomorrow in the cut tire class when these guys come back and do battle again. Right now, as I mentioned, the surprise of the class, Daniel Carher definitely starting off his career strong. Made his uh, first competition pass out of Burwell, Nebraska with the MRA championship earlier this year. So he's looking good so far. He's been consistent. And uh, we'll see what he does as he purges the nitrous there on the starting line. That's what those puffs are that you're seeing. These cars are uh, nitrous injected. Gives them a little bit better atmosphere inside the uh, combustion chamber to burn more fuel. They can put a little more horsepower into the track, but you want to purge it because you don't want to put too much nitrous through that system. You'll bog the motor down coming off the starting line. So we'll see what he can do here in session two. Boy, he's nothing if he's not consistent. Look at that, a 265. He's chasing his own time at a 263. He should be happy about that pair of runs. That was a good one right there. So getting his career started off strong here in the modified class. A pair of two sixes to open up his weekend. We'll see if he can uh, speed things up on these guys uh, tomorrow in the cut tire class. As uh, I mentioned, one of the giants of the sport, Keith Mitchell, 
in the Magician, a very different vehicle from the others that are here in competition. You can see it just by looking at it. It's going to go side by side with Shane Olrogi and Deranged, your points leader, guy who's uh, had a runaway season. If anybody could knock him down, it's got to be Keith. But uh, both of those guys are keeping their eye on the man out of West Virginia right now, that being Jason Massey and the Massey Mud Racing Machine. Jason has the advantage right now of coming later in the class. He gets to watch everybody else run before he comes up for his single as uh, Keith Mitchell there. See again, purging the nitrous. It's ready to go side by side with the father and son team out of Wisconsin. And that's a problem right there. Something came loose in the far lane. That was a 100% expulsion of a nitrous bottle right there. And that may put a hamper on the uh, hopes of the Orogi team right now who are sitting in the number one spot, but they could ill afford to lose a run against a couple of guys coming up after them like this. And right now, Keith Mitchell sits over there. I'm not sure how they're gonna handle this though. So Rogi cannot make a run with the car in that condition, but what is Mitchell going to do? All right, he's going to go ahead and stage. Jerry in the front end right there, the Magician, a 2-3-3. Three, three, three. For Keith Mitchell. That is going to put him in the uh, number two spot, I believe, right now. So not moving to number one, but an impressive run for Keith Mitchell. Still not quite getting what he wants out of that vehicle, but he did not have that problem, it looked like, with those ruts. And we keep talking about those. You hear during the interviews, those guys uh, kind of bumping into some of the ruts down here in this heavier clay that they're running in uh, this time around here in Mississippi. And what it is is there's multiple other classes running on this track, including a local class. And as they go down through there, they are chewing up this uh, soil as the Orogi family looks like they're gonna relight it right now. We did hear them fire the car back up. So we are gonna get a run out of the father-son team from Wisconsin. They're gonna try to hang in there on that number one spot. They're still sitting there right now. As uh, Shane ran a 2-3-2. Two, Two four seven, not going to uh, better his own run, so he's just going to have to hope Massey doesn't get past him. And the reason that that probably happened was having to reset everything on the starting line took away a little bit from the car. He probably had it just about where he wanted when he rolled up there. He had to know that uh, having to basically put the car back together on the starting line was going to be a little bit of a problem. It wasn't a major problem. He just had to run and get another bottle and uh, hook it back up to the line. But again, having to reset the pressure, the temperature probably wasn't where they wanted. You need those bottles to kind of be at optimum temperature. And that one probably was not, as I said, where they wanted it. This is a battle of precision, believe it or not. And here comes Jason Massey, who's got a heavy right foot, but a very precise vehicle. That's a good run right there on two, three, one with a seven. We'll do it for Jason Massey, the outsider from Frazier's Bottom, West Virginia, a record holder in the class and on this series who has not run with these guys since last year in transfer Pennsylvania, comes down to Gore Springs, Mississippi and steals the honor away from the MRA elite. The guy came to spoil the party and he did so. Since we haven't had a chance to talk to you since transfer, you snuck down here from West Virginia and you cleaned up. Uh, how'd the pass feel? It was good. Uh, we made some changes after the first round and picked up a little. It was close, close racing. Yeah, the modified class was uh, definitely close at the end. It seemed like the, the three guys at the bottom were right next to each other. Keith scared everybody a little bit, but you came in right after him and it looked like your pass was just about perfect. You guys didn't seem to be having the trouble at the starting line some of the other guys were saying they had. Uh, we got lucky sometimes. It was good to see you and uh, good luck down the road. All right, thank you. 
Soft-spoken gentleman. He lets the car do the talking. Again, he's not really in the championship fight here, but he could definitely do some damage to the guys sitting at the top of this thing. There you see the points after today's action. Shane O'Rogi continuing with that massive lead over the rest of the class. But Keith, got to try to catch him. Stay with us. The Open class wraps up when we come back to Gore Springs, Mississippi. No, it's not raining. That's just the amount of humidity hanging in the air here in Gore Springs, Mississippi at DT's Dirt Drags. Here is a look at our open cuts results after session one going into session two. You see it's Billy Fling sitting on top at a 2-3-1 with a 7. Kevin Harrison at a 2-3-3 could jump up and bite him as he comes to the line right now. Joel Coolidge looking to straighten things out, followed by the Hahn brothers in fourth and fifth. And remember, David Hahn smacked the guardrail coming out of the lane in uh, session one. Looks like we had a little problem getting the car to back up there on the starting line. So we'll see if that develops into anything as Kevin Harrison gets staged up by Jeremy Hood and Eric Bidlack you see there in the blue shirt. Jeremy Hood, by the way, has a car that'll be making an appearance in uh, probably a few weeks here in uh, Paducah, Kentucky. We're hoping we'll get to see Jeremy in action with his new machine, another Eric Bidlack built vehicle. That one turbocharged. We'll see what happens now, though, as Kevin Harrison comes in to try to knock down Billy Fling. Harrison into the rail hard there, about half track. The car completely went to the right-hand side. It looked like he had problems from go, a 286. Fairly impressive considering the car looked to be completely out of control, but Harrison just went for a ride on that one. They're going to go down there and check on him because he did actually get off the ground right there. Look at that. The car immediately to the right-hand side of the track and then bangs off the rail and the embankment. That could have been a whole lot worse. Watch it again. Way early in the run, he's out of control, and then right before the finish line, maybe about three quarters track, he makes contact, hard contact, with the uh, center rail there, and he uh, has definitely done some damage to the never enough machine. Luckily, he's close to home. There we see Kevin climbing out. Looks to be okay. He's probably going to be a little sore because these cars are not meant to get off the ground like that, but uh, they're going to put a quick groom on that lane to take that big rut he just left in and out because that, uh, that right hand turn he took could definitely wreak havoc for these guys. Watch it again from the end zone. Bang! Right there. He got into it a lot harder than it looked from the sideline. And uh, they're saying right now he was in two wheel drive and yeah that's what you're seeing exactly what you're seeing. A lot of people ask why these cars need four wheel drive with the front end coming off the ground. That right there is a car in two-wheel drive and out of balance. That was rear-wheel drive only, so there was nothing on the front wheels for him to steer. He could not pull the car back the direction he wanted it, and I don't think he knew that because he stayed in the throttle all the way to the rail. He didn't let out of it until it was a little bit too late, but uh, easier said than done. It all happens in the blink of an eye. Now, your points champion from 2021 in the front engine, Brasket Race Cars built reality check going side by side with a guy who is shooting for the championship this season, the father and son team out of Two Harbors, Minnesota. That's Joel Coolidge in Nightmare 6. And you can see these guys actually do run a little bit of nitrous into the back of the blower as well to help cool the air going in the combustion chamber. Fling looking awesome again, a 2-2-7. Speeding things up. Nobody getting past Billy Fling tonight. He was looking good. In reality, check. What a run for Billy Fling. 
That's what he has been looking for all season long. He's just been hanging back there in second place. As uh, Doc Riley pointed out the last time we saw Billy, he's one of the best second place drivers on the series. He's trying to get himself back up in the championship fight, see if he can do back-to-back -back championships this year in uh, 2022. As I said again, he won both the paddle and cut tire classes. Now as the Han brothers come to the line, there you see Born Free still smoking a lot, but not near as much as he was in the uh, previous session, but still more than I think they'd like that vehicle to be doing so. And as Lou explained, he's running an awful lot of fuel through that engine, so hopefully they can get that thing tamed down. We'll see if uh, Lou can get his car to speed up a little bit here in this session, maybe get him to go past Billy Fling. Wild ride from both of those guys, not the run either one of them was looking for. Lou Hahn at a 265, 253 for David Hahn, so he definitely sped up from the previous session, but uh, that final pairing was a little bit of a wild ride there. Of course, nobody had the ride that Kevin Harrison had a little earlier on, but you can see David Hahn pedaling it, landed the belly of the car into the heavy Mississippi loam here at DT's Dirt Drag. So that's gonna wrap things up as we take a look at the final results. Billy Fling leading the charge at a 227. Kevin Harrison having to rely on the 233 that he laid down in session one. And we really hope we see that car back tomorrow because he did indeed do a lot of damage to that machine when he banged into that guardrail. One more look at the run that put Billy Fling on top of the field here in Gore Springs. Hey, Billy, it's finally coming around. The wind's uh, starting to pick up here late in the season. Yeah, they are. That was a, that was a good pass right there. It worked out well for us. 227, it didn't seem like the starting line was hurting you at all. It wasn't. I, like I said, I stayed off the two-step and just let the thing take off, and it, it took, the, took the starting line real well. All right, this guy's not telling anybody his secrets to wait in this car, but he seems to have the secret formula. We'll see if he can keep this up for the rest of the year. Well, here is a look at the points coming out of this action here in Gore Springs. And you can see Billy Fling and Joel Coolidge have overtaken Kevin Harrison for the number one spot. And you can see how many points get moved around per weekend here on the MRA Championship Series. David Hahn sneaking on up there into fourth place just over the Canadian Steve Renaud, who we will be seeing back again later this year. I'm not sure what event he'll be reappearing. He'll either be back at Paducah in a couple weeks or we'll see him at the season finale in uh, Missouri. But for the time being, Billy Fling sits on top in the open class. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.